Welcome back to the bluegrass on this beautiful February day. We had a nice storm last night. The power went off for a while, but the awesome guys at KU came and uh, fixed us up. You got to love those linemen. They don't let anything get in the way of doing their job. They're one of the real heroes in uh, the modern workforce. Georgie, move up this way for me for a second so we can kind of see what kind of dogs you have. George is out here exercising a bunch of dogs, and uh, we're having a really good time. Whenever we have situations like uh, snow uh, or a lot of heat or excessive rain or like tonight an ice storm, uh, then we have to get the dogs out and we know we're going to have to go through a little bit of an acclimation process early in the morning to get the dogs to the point to where they're going to be able to, uh, you know, work on their formal school work, you know, what we call their, their basic vocabulary and physical skills. And so that's what we're doing today. We're just kind of out here in the field getting these dogs used to uh, running around uh, and uh, like dealing with the texture of the ice on the ground. Let me see if I can flip this camera over here and show you what I mean. Like if you'll look, there's just a ton of ice. I'll try to try to show you. See, that's what's covering the ground right there is ice. And so these dogs have all been here for a little while and they're used to coming out and running on the nice soft grass and this morning they came out and <laughs> the grass was all hard and crunchy and cold and so what that did is that made them real nervous didn't it georgie yeah they were just getting around and so the best way to get dogs over being nervous is to get them out and exercise them run down the field georgie and then run back so basically when we come out the dogs were kind of scared to come out into the field and uh, we just had to come out here and get them moving around always remember that's far enough george come on back Always remember that there's an inverse relationship between exercise and anxiety, okay? So if you're in a situation where you need to expose your dog to new and novel stimulation, okay, get them out and warm them up first because it makes everything a lot easier. Now, once we, uh, once we get the dogs to where they're running around and they're doing pretty well, then we're going to head back down to our Exercise with Small Challenges course, which is what we consider our classroom or our, where we do our formal work. Now, when we go down here, uh, what you're going to notice is that the whole thing is covered in ice, and so it's a low-traction environment. And so since we're asking them to do things that they know how to do theoretically, which is to display their physical skills and their responses to our basic vocabulary words, uh, we have to adjust our expectations because we're asking them to do those things in a completely different environment. And this is one of the problems we run into with novice uh, dog trainers all the time. They'll have a dog, you know, people email me and they say, don't even know my dog was fetching perfectly last week and it's not fetching this week. But they don't think that the, you know, the temperature went from being 75 degrees last week to 90 degrees this week, you know, uh, or the same thing in terms of like winter time. All right, as George makes his way up onto the Exercise of Small Challenges course, the first thing you will notice is that our course and all of our equipment seem to be covered in snow, but that's not true. What's it covered in, Georgie? Ice. Ice. Look at all these icicles, guys. So what that tells you is not only are we operating in a cold environment today, but we're also operating in a low traction environment today. And uh, when, you're, when you're training dogs, guys, you always have to take environmental factors into consideration. So let's start off, George, and show them how uh, a dog that was bred for this kind of weather does. And then we'll show them how a dog that wasn't bred for this kind of weather does. So start off with that little dog there, Riley. Okay, guys, so what Riley is is a nice little English lab. And uh, you'll hear me refer to those kind of dogs oftentimes as little chubbies. And I make fun of them a lot because we make a lot of videos in the summertime. You know? <laughs> and in the summertime, these little short, blocky, uh, you know, kind of chubby dogs, they get hot easy. And so they like, to, they like to ride around in the truck. They like to ride around in the four-wheeler and on the boat and kind of lounge. You know, they're big loungers. And I'm always calling them 1% dogs because they're so pretty. Uh, but when it comes to this cold weather... Georgie, who's been the most active dog out here this morning? Little Riley. Little Riley. Little Riley loves to get out and move around and uh, investigate this icy, snowy tundra of the bluegrass. All right, but let's take a look. Let me show you. This is going to be kind of interesting. So our teeter-totter is absolutely covered in ice. And so that's a pretty daunting challenge for a dog. But look at Riley. 
She just walks up it like it's no problem because the ice and the snow, that's her domain. Look, right up over the steps. Very nice. Over the high dog walk. See how sure-footed she is? How happy she is? The only one unhappy in this situation is George because his fingers are cold. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you want to see a positive reinforcement dog trainer like give up the ghost quick? Take them out and ask them to give treats uh, in an ice storm because their hands will get wet and cold. And they wait right there for a second, Georgie. Let me look at you. Oh, Riley, you're such a good dog. Uh, but George is a trooper. He's been doing this his whole life, and so his hands are pretty tough. He's still able to give a few treats now and again. But if you guys will watch this video closely. He ain't reaching in that treat pouch none too often. <laughs> All right, go ahead and go on. Finish the course up with her. Now, um, guys, you can see Riley in a couple of other videos that I've done. And I want you to notice that uh, in all the videos, it's been relatively uh, chilly. And so Riley's, uh, you know, her basic demeanor hasn't changed. Her overall energy level hasn't changed too much. Okay. She, again, thrives in this kind of environment. Oh, there you go, Georgie. Now, running around here in the background, what you'll see is a couple of other dogs that weren't really designed for this kind of work. There's a, uh, an English Setter, and there's an English Pointer, and somewhere around here is a German Shorthair Pointer. And we'll get one of them next, and we'll kind of talk about the difference. Now, up here with Riley has jumped... <laughs> a nice black lab. Uh, the problem with the black labs in this kind of uh, weather is that uh, you, <laughs> you <laughs> can't hardly make them out. But you can make out Riley. So she's a super cutie and she's done a great job. So now let's get one of those uh, kind of uh, skinnier dogs, Georgie, and show them what they look like. All right, now George has rounded up Addie. Uh, go ahead and start walking the course, Georgie. And Addie's a nice little uh, German short hair pointer. You'll notice, though, that uh, you haven't seen Addie quite as much, and the glimpses that you caught of her were uh, darting in and out of the frame because these German short hairs and, say, the English setter and the English pointer that are here, the only real way that they have to stay warm is to stay in constant motion, okay? And so they, like, they're kind of high-strung dogs anyway, and they move real quickly. But, so not only are they, like, in motion all the time when they're out here, and so it makes them kind of hard to get to be still and work on their manners, but also when you're going to do something like work on this uh, A-frame, wait right there for a second, or this teeter-totter, they fidget and they move and they carry on. So you have to be much more careful in a low traction environment when you're working a bird dog than you do when you're working a dog that was bred to perform well in this type of environment. Okay, Georgie, come on down. It's not that they can't do it. It's just that they're not going to do it quite as well, you know. So you have to lower your expectations. Oh, and... <laughs> I'm not performing myself because I just fell down. <laughs> All right. So the kind of things you'll notice when George is walking Addie is, uh, you know, he has to use a little bit more leash pressure. She darts and, like, pulls a little bit more often. So not only is uh, she putting herself in more danger, but she's putting, wait right there, Georgie, she's putting her handler in more danger, okay? So, like, we can sit out here and work these little chubbies all day long in this cold weather, and they do perfect, and we don't have to worry about falling down too much. But, put that leash on one of these bird dogs when they're uncomfortable, and you better have your own proprioception on point, otherwise you're going to be on your behind, aren't you, Georgie? Very nice. Easy. And you see Riley following right along there, like, hey, what's the big deal, you know? It's amazing how people just fail to recognize the influence of environmental factors on dog performance. And uh, that's why a lot of people end up having uh, sessions and go south on them is because they, their, you know, their goals aren't real, realistic for that session. Like, see right there where Addie is like all kind of, you know, pausy and jumping up and carrying on? She's cold, guys, and uh, that spurs her to move more. So whenever you're working on manners <laughs> with a bird dog and it's cold, expect to have more trouble. 
Now let's take that uh, same you know, rule and apply it to these labs. It, when it's hot and you want labs to have good manners, say you've got a lab that jumps on your granny and you want her to <laughs> stop and it's July, well you don't have to know any fancy dog training. You don't have to get a leash and collar. You don't have to get a clicker. You don't really have to do much of anything other than take them for a walk in the July heat and then by the time your granny gets there, they'll be nice and tired and sacked out on the uh, air conditioner vent. All right, so now here's Woody. Woody's another bird dog, English pointer. And uh, now Woody's a real good dog. You've seen him in some videos. Woody, especially when the weather's nice, just go ahead and start right there, Georgie. Especially when the weather's nice, Woody's a real pleasure to work on the motion exercises. He never gets tired. He uh, has a tremendously resilient temperament. So if something doesn't go his way, say we're on the doing the brush pile challenge and he has a little trouble and falls off, he just jumps right back up there like nothing happened, right? This cold weather, though, he ain't much on it. When it was raining uh, last night, Woody was uh, sitting by the door the whole time. Okay, let's take and put him on the teeter-totter, Georgie, and see if that looks similar. Now, see, Woody did a pretty good job. Pretty proud of Woody. Very nice. So let's let him kind of stay there for one second, Georgie. Very nice. Now, Woody sees all those other dogs running around and playing. He's thinking about darting off. Again, that's a bird dog quality. Come on up the steps Georgie very nice Woody's been with us for a few weeks and he's made a tremendous amount of progress I'm very proud of him but notice how he's looking off now right here we had a little bit of trouble with Addy starting to pull on the leash he gets real slippery we'll see if Woody does any better I managed to not fall down so that was a plus there we go up up very nice good job good job Georgie all right slow down a little bit let me ice skate my way back very nice. All right, wait right there. See how Woody does in this low, low traction environment. Look at his feet. Pretty sure footed. But he's still kind of looking off and seeing what those other dogs are doing. Man, we fight that with these bird dogs non-stop. Okay, Georgie, let's finish this course out. Up, up. Very nice. Sometimes with these bird dogs, if you're trying to do kind of obedience training with them, it's easy to fall over into the category of uh, putting a negative label on them like, uh, you know, hard-headed because they're naturally uh, easily distracted. But the reality is, look, when you're breeding bird dogs, you're breeding dogs to get distracted easily. Nobody wants a bird dog that gets out of the truck and uh, looks at you and says, hey, I wonder if there's any birds over there. You want a bird dog that gets out and uh, goes to looking for stuff to do. Very nice. Georgie, would you say that Woody's always looking for something to do? Yeah, and so that makes Woody very fun to take out and do stuff with. He just struggles when the doing stuff uh, is over. Or if you need to take a break during the middle of doing stuff. Another thing you'll see that uh, uh, these dogs are kind of having trouble with is sitting, right? Because they don't want to put their bottoms on, uh, on that ice, and I can't really blame them. All right, Georgie, let's get Toki. Toki is a uh, really fancy bred little English setter. Another hard worker, does great at the motion exercises, uh, does kind of poorly at the being still exercises, uh, but all in all, he's a great dog. And again, we just have to avoid the labels. Toki, he's kind of a, he's a little bit on the thin skin side to be out in this kind of weather. And so he's like Addy, he's had to be in motion the whole day. Uh, now, the disadvantage of that is that it makes it a little bit tough sometimes to, you know, work on the formal aspects of their manners training. Go ahead, Georgie. Uh, but uh, it makes it really easy to work on things like their recalls. So that's cool. Wait right there. Let's see how he does. A little bit unsure, but not doing too bad. Let me get to move in here. All right. Now come up the steps. Very nice. Very nice. All right, now wait there for a second. Good. Good. Okay, now come on down. Perfect. Let me skate my way back. Don't rush me. Don't rush me, Georgie. All right, come on. There we go. Very nice, Toki. So I'm pretty proud of Toki. That's really well controlled for an English setter. Good. All right, make him wait right there, Georgie. I'll come up and look at him. We'll look at his feet. The reason I 
come up here and have you look at their feet, guys, is because uh, I want you to see, like, if they're shifting their feet a lot. A dog that's calm and confident, <laughs> they won't be shifting their feet a lot. And a dog that's not sure, they'll do what uh, Toki just did. You see how when I walked up on him, he kind of had his feet a little bit crossed. Just wasn't sure how to handle uh, that, all that ice, this low traction environment. And that's why we get them out here and work them. We don't want Toki to run up on these type of low traction environments in a real life situation where somebody's on vacation uh, or maybe they're on their ranch or in a hunting situation. We try to prepare them for all eventualities. But you could see there where Toki had that little bit of trouble. Again, that's something that we prepare for and something that we expect out of the dogs that aren't really, uh, you know, suited for this type of weather. Wait right there. Now, if this was summertime, uh, you would see Toki excelling uh, as compared to this English lab in terms of being able to dissipate heat. Because <laughs> these little chubbies do not dissipate heat very well at all. And same thing for Woody. Woody, he can run in the summertime pretty much uh, all day. You give him a little water, give him a little shade every once in a while, and uh, Woody or Toki would be champs whereas Riley would be wanting to get back on the four-wheeler or back in the air conditioner of the truck all right George we'll see if we can get him set up there on that table now the odds of Toki wanting to get up there and sit uh, pretty low so we'll just see if we can <laughs> and look he's not about to he's like I just ain't doing it that's all right Georgie he doesn't have to we'll work on that next week very nice all right, where is slow-mo? Come over here, Georgie. Look at slow-mo. Now, I want you guys, <laughs> you want to see a dog that's truly built for this kind of weather. Right here, it's slow-mo. He's just laid over here, relaxing, you know, uh, just <laughs> chilling, just like he was on the beach. Because this is beach weather to slow-mo. He's a real thick, uh, uh, square, uh, English bread, chocolate lab. And this weather, I mean, it's just nothing to him. He just hangs out and lays around. And uh, <laughs> he was on top of the pool earlier with the other dogs, like trying to go swimming. You know, now it's pretty well, you know, frozen over, so he can't, uh, he can't get in there. But he was giving it a good shot. Let's watch slow mo. Now slow mo is very sure-footed, and uh, he's a, uh, you know, very confident dog. But he's confident in doing things at his own pace, isn't he, Georgie? He, lo <laughs> he loves to just trudge on. Like these other dogs can get in his way. They can try to unbalance him. <laughs> they can try to bully him. He just got a good attitude. Nothing ever gets him down. He keeps on trucking. Kind of, kind of like a mule. Very nice. Let's see how he handles this. Uh, watch. Look at that. Is he the most sure-footed, Georgie? Most sure-footed dog ever. All right, come on up the steps. Now we get over here. I try to get a little closer to him so you guys can see what I mean. Stop right there for a second, Georgie. And let me just kind of get up here and give you guys an overview. Look, he's got a lot of fat on him. Slow-mo. Slow-mo. Give me a treat, Georgie, so I can get his head up here. Up. Let me get all right, so look at Slow Mo there. He's got a big old head, a lot of fat, super thick fur, got a short stubby tail, big deep chest. I mean, he's really just built for cold weather, you know? So he lives in Michigan too, so that's, I mean, that's perfect. But this same dog, the one we're so happy with right now, okay, if this was July, We'd be having to give him breaks in the air conditioner to get him to be able to do the course, uh, you know, even once or twice in a row. All right, Georgie, come on off there. Sometimes people give me a hard time because I call these English labs chubbies, especially the people that live uh, up far north. You know, they'll call or they'll email and they'll be like, Stoney, bring one of them skinny, skinny field labs from America up here to the great Canadian wilderness. And uh, it won't even get out of the truck. You know, it'll be cold and, and it'll be whining, it'll freeze to death, you know. And that's true, guys. These uh, chubbier dogs, squarer dogs, thicker dogs, they do much better in the cold weather. 
and they're much more energetic you know like slow mo's energy level pretty much is going to be the same all day whereas what look at addy over here Addy has to stay moving to stay warm. Woody has to stay moving to stay warm. If I were to leave Woody and Addy and Toki out here, once they ran out of enough energy to uh, uh, keep moving, then I'd be in real danger of them harming themselves for getting too cold. I could leave Slow Mo out here, uh, Riley out here all day long, or any of my dogs out here all day long, and they just go to sleep and wouldn't even notice. Again, environmental factors determine whether a dog is going to be successful in uh, terms of a lot of different metrics. But look at Slow Mo. 100% confident, 100% sure footed, 100% good attitude, and this ice hasn't affected him one little bit. All right, put him up on there, Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> now he ain't going to get up there none too fast but he's going to get up there <laughs> very nice and then look he didn't even mind turn him around here so we can see him georgie and he didn't even mind sitting down and look at woody woody is like dude there's no way i'm putting my bottom down on that ice and in slow-mo he could care less because it's not even cold to slow-mo it's like 20 something degrees out here and uh slow-mo is having a beach day and woody it's saying, dude, when are we going in? <laughs> oh, is Woody going to sit down? Oh, dang. Woody sat down. Woody's getting tough, too. That's the thing. Slow Mo has been a mentor to Woody and taught him that it's okay to sit down. But <laughs> Woody tried it and didn't like it. All right, George, you think that's enough dogs for these guys to get to the point that uh, environmental factors have to be taken into consideration when Absolutely. designing their training regimen for the day? Absolutely. All right, guys, so get out in the ice or the snow or whatever you've got today and uh, do some training. Don't let the weather get you down. Just make sure that you set realistic expectations for the day because realistic expectations are the key to being successful.